Welcome to part 9 of this series of tutorials about book art. This video is a continuation of my tutorial series and I will be using terms which I explained in my previous videos. Therefore, it is recommended to watch them first. Here you will find hints to speed up the process of creating your unique book. The time spent on a project will mostly depend on the amount of details in the pattern and the number of pages. The most basic way to optimize your work is to apply one step to all sheets and then move to the next step, starting from the beginning of your book, rather than applying all steps to one sheet and then moving on to the next sheet. Drawing lines in the first step can be sped up by applying marks to the top and bottom edge of the book in the appropriate places. This will eliminate the process of measuring the depth of the lines on every sheet. Now you only have to make sure that the edge of the ruler aligns with both the mark on the top and bottom edge of the book. If you use a marker or pen with ink which is absorbed by the paper, the marks will be visible on the leaf. So you won't need to turn the book up and down to see the marks. Using a knife and carving the places for the lines will also give a similar result. Another way to avoid measuring both lines each time is to strongly press your pencil while drawing the lines. If you do that, you will be able to see the impression of the line on the next sheet. If you do not have any preferences about where the background or pattern starts, you can choose the depth of your first line according to how broad your ruler is or whatever tool you are using. This will help you to avoid having to measure the depth of the first line each time. Instead, you can align the edge of your ruler with the book's foredge and draw the line along the second edge of the ruler. Just to remind you, the first line is necessary to know how deep you need to cut in the next step. In order to avoid drawing the first line, you can also use the book's margin instead and cut until the text starts. This may help you save time, however, in certain cases this may produce a less precise outcome. The margin doesn't always end at the same depth and you may have marks which are high or low on the page where the side margin intersects with the top and bottom margins and there will be no text to serve as a reference. Another special case in which you can avoid measuring the depth of one of the two lines or completely skip drawing it is when you decide to have your line in the middle of the book. And then you can bend your sheet such that its edge is aligned with the opposite edge. You will need to press the sheet to obtain a line where it is folded. This can serve as your line. But with this approach, you have to make sure that it works with your book. When the pages are glued, some pages may be glued more or less to the spine than others. In that case, how far you can fold a page from the foredge will differ from page to page. This means that the line created after folding the sheet in half may be in different spots from the foredge for different sheets. You also have to be careful when using this approach for thick books or books with thick sheets. The deeper the first line is, the more your book will be opened when you use method 1 or 2. In this example, the first line has been drawn at half the book's width. The book has only 156 pages, but the pages are thick. We can see that the book is opened wide and the pattern is broadened. My favorite way of speeding up the process of drawing the lines is to make a very simple tool. To create it, you only need a rigid piece of paper or cardboard. For example, a piece of a chocolate box or the back of a notebook. Cut a thick stripe. The stripe I made here is 5 cm wide. Make sure that both edges are straight. Then draw another line. Here I drew it 4 cm from one edge and 1 cm from the other edge. Next, draw a line very close to the previous one, so that there is a gap of only 1 or 3 mm between the lines. Then cut along these two lines. But do not cut to the end. Stop at least 1 cm from the top. Cut out the very narrow band. The cardboard should still be connected at the top. From the very narrow piece which has been cut out, take a small piece and tape it back at the bottom of the stripe, so that there is another connection. The final result should look like what I am showing here in the video. You should have a rigid stripe with a very narrow band cut out from it. The width of the stripe is arbitrary and so is the position of the cut out piece, but it should be closer to one edge than the other, it should not be in the middle. Now you can use this tool to draw the two lines without needing to measure the distances every time. Another clever idea of drawing the two lines at once is to build yourself another tool. Simply tape two pens together. You can place something in between them if you want more space between the pens. Now you can draw both lines at once.
As I already mentioned in my previous videos, using the bank template for marking is usually faster than using the table. You can additionally speed up the process by putting this pattern picture not directly under the sheet you want to mark, but a few sheets further. Now you only need to insert the pattern picture deeper, thereby moving to the next stripe to apply to the next sheet. But do not exaggerate and do not put the pattern picture too many pages below the starting one. This may result in very inaccurate marks. If you are certain that you can precisely cut the straight perpendicular lines, you may skip the step of drawing perpendicular lines between the foredge and the first line in the places where the marks were applied. If the font in the book you use is small, it can also help you to keep the straight lines by following the letters. It is important that the cuts are straight, otherwise the folded pattern and background parts will overlap and that may disturb your result. If your folded parts overlap, correct it by cutting out the overlapping piece. The next hint for speeding up the project for methods 3 and 4 is to use a sharp knife and a cutting board. The cutting process may be faster using them instead of scissors, especially for method 3 and 4 when you have to cut out large pieces. The cutting board needs to be placed under the current sheet to not cut out parts of the next sheets. For cut and fold methods, what also helps to save time, especially for complex patterns, is to fold the entire sheet to the first and second line before cutting it. In this case, after you cut a sheet, the pattern and background parts that you obtain are already pre-folded. If you use a very old book and your pattern is detailed, meaning it has many narrow tabs, the leaf may lose its integrity and the small tabs may fall off. Instead of taping them back, you can first apply sticky tape along the first line. This will strengthen the crease of the tabs and you won't have to tape them back when they disconnect, which at the end will help you save time. Be creative and mark cut fold and enjoy your book with Nail It!